Hello everybody, I'm going to discuss with you this lecture which is about the prolonged and abstracted labor. The objective of this lecture is to know, or the importance of this lecture is just to know first of all what is the normal labor in order to know the, the types and the causes of the prolonged and the abstracted labor how would you going to diagnose uh, the uh, prolonged and abstracted labor? How you are going to manage these abnormalities? And how are you going to treat what is the complication that you are in, uh, encountered in these conditions? First of all, what is the definition of normal labor? Normal labor is a normal physiological process which is ended by expulsion of a product of constipators to the exterior wall, which is the fetus or the newborn after delivery. And it is characterized by the normal, synchronized rhythmic uterine contraction. And I mean by the normal, synchronized, efficient rhythmic uterine contractions is the presence of three regular uterine contraction per 10 minutes, and each contraction has lasted for about 45 to 16 seconds. This regular synchronized rhythmic uterine contraction will lead to progressive increment in cervical dilatation and progressive descent in the presenting part. So, the normal labor depend on the regular rhythmic uterine contraction, which is the power, and the leading to progressive increase in the uterine and the cervical dilatation, which is the passages, and progressive descent in the presenting part, which is the passenger. Any abnormality any, in any of these three parameters may cause prolongation of labor. So, the prolonged labor is means any prolongation either in the first or in the second or even in the third stage of labor. The, norm, the normal progress of labor usually judged by first, the dilatation of the cervix, which is the start from no dilatation up to full dilatation of the cervix, which is 10 centimeter. Second, by the descent of the fetal head, which is usually start by a floating head, in which the fetal head or five fifth of the fetal head is palpable abdominally until descent of the fetal head within the pelvis following during this state, uh, during the uh, process of labor until delivery of the fetal head. Three, the condition of the mother, which is very important for assessment of the fetal well-being of the mother by assessment of the proper, by proper history taking of the mother for any pre-existing medical illness, uh, assessment of the vital sign of the mother, etc. And also for full assessment of the condition of the fetus for fetal well-being, including fetal movement, the color of the liquor, the fetal heart assessment, the cardiotechography, and even assessment of the fetal blood pH, and also assessment for the presence or absence of any molding, the presence or absence of caput sexidinium, and etc. Normal labor usually divided in two phases, the latent phase and the active phase. This diagram will show the normal labor. And as we say, it is divided to the latent phase. And this phase usually taken after regular rhythmic uterine contraction, it is usually below three centimeter dilatation. And this phase is taken for the of the cervix.
which is meant by effacement of the cervix. Usually effacement of the cervix is the period which is taken for shortening in the cervical canal and softening of the cervix. Usually the cervical canal is about two to four centimeter and during the process of latent phase, there will be a gradual effacement of the cervix. And I mean by this that the cervix start to be incorporated as part of the lower uterine segment. For example, during pelvic examination, the patient or the doctor may say that the cervix is 50% effaced. That's to say that about half of the cerv cervical limb has been taken up or incorporated as to be a part of the lower uterine signal. So, despite of the patient having regular rhythmic uterine contraction, during the latent phase, there is no increment in the cervical dilatation, but the patient have progressive increment in cervical effacement rather than increase in the cervical dilatation. The second phase during the first stage of labor is the active phase. And the active phase is subdivided into three phases. The first one is the acceleration phase when there is progressive increment in the cervical dilatation and the phase of maximum slope when there is rapid increase in the cervical dilatation against time and the, the third phase is the deceleration phase in which there is a plateau or slower slowing in the rate of cervical dilatation till the patient reach the full dilatation of the cervix which is 10 cm by which we will end the first stage of labor and the second stage of labor is starting. This is the first stage of labor which, have, which can be subdivided into the latent phase and the active phase of labor. So, as we say, the normal labor divided to the latent phase and the active phase and this, uh, this progression uh, or this uh, paragraph is usually plotted in the partogram and the first scientist which is uh, find out or find the, this, the uh, uh, plotted or plotted the progression of labor by diagram is Friedman and found that the progression of the first stage of labor is a sigmoid-like shape and the scientist is known as Friedman. This is a Bartogram, and the Bartogram contains a full information regarding the name of the patient, the gravity, the parity, the date and time of admission, and it will assess the fetal well-being, assessment of the fetal heart, the state of lacquer, if there is any molding or not, and also we have to plot the cervical dilatation against time in addition for the descent of the presenting part and also we have to plot the, 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 the cervical dilatation, the latent phase the, and the active phase and it will decide whether there is any abnormality in the progression of labor and when we have to take an action if there is poor uh, or abnormal uh, progression in the labor in which we have to interfere. We have three abnormalities in the prolongation of labor and these are either there is a prolongation in the latent phase of labor which is called as a prolonged latent phase and this is usually when the patient has been admitted and remained in the latent phase for a prolonged period of time that's to say it remained for a long period of time below uh, and she have no progression and no increment in the cervical dilatation for long period of time and the cervical dilatation remained less than three centimeter this is the prolonged 
latent phase. This is the prolonged latent phase. When the patient have efficient regular rhythmic uterine contraction, and despite of that, there is no increment in the cervical dilatation, and the cervical dilatation remain below three centimeter and dilatation. This is the first abnormality. Or there will be another type of abnormality which is called the primary dysfunctional labor. And the primary dysfunctional labor, it means that the patient have, although she have some progression in the cervical dilatation, but it is slower than the normal rate. It will, the patient have some sort of progression, but it is slower than normal. And this type of abnormality, it is also can be known as protracted active or protracted labor, protracted active phase or primary dysfunctional labor. The third abnormality, it is what is called as secondary arrest. And in secondary arrest, the patient at the beginning have normal rate in the progression of labor in the form of cervical dilatation, but there is a state in which the patient remain for a period of time with no progression, usually what is called secondary arrest, and this is usually occur at, at about eight to at eight centimeter onward, in which the patient may remain for two to three hours with no progression in the cervical dilatation, and this is known as secondary arrest or arrest in the cervical dilatation, and this is indicate that there is some acquired cause which is occur later in labor and led to arrest in the cervical dilatation, which is also known as arrest uh, 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 or uh, arrest of cervical dilatation or secondary arrest. So. We have either prolonged latent phase, this is one of the abnormality, or primary dysfunctional labor, or protractive active phase, or secondary arrest in the cervical dilatation. This is the three abnormalities which we ha may have or encounter during prolongation of labor. Okay, then prolonged latent phase, primary dysfunctional labor, or secondary arrest. Usually, Friedman defined the prolonged latent phase when the latent phase lasted for more than 20 hours in nulliparous patient and more than 14 hours in the uh, multiparous patient. And the causes is either excessive sedation like epidural analgesia or poor cervical tissue, that's to say the cerv cervix is a tubular or have thick cervix uh, and if a cervix and sometimes if the patient have false labor that's to say the patient actual it is not an active established labor and being admitted to the la to the labor ward as a an labor and she remained for a long period of time more than 20 hours for a multiparous patient and after which she's been labeled as a prolonged latent phase the active phase or what is called usually the active phase start after three centimeter dilatation and it's one of the most common abnormalities regarding prolonged labor and account for 25 percent in the nulliparous patients and 15 percent in multiparous patients and it is divided it as a protraction which is also known as primary dysfunctional labor or arrest which is known as secondary arrest. As we say, or as we know, that a protraction or secondary arrest, a primary dysfunctional, the normal rate of cervical dilatation is one, more than one centimeter for uh, uh, nulliparous patient and one, one more than 1.5 to 2 centimeter in multiparous patients. If it is, if the rate of cervical dilatation is became less than one to 1.2 centimeter in nulliparous patients, and less than 
1.5 to 2 cm in multiporous patient per hour, then it is primary dysfunctional labor or what is called as a protractive active phase. And we can mention that the patient have a rest in cervical dilatation when the patient have no cervical dilatation more for more than two hours. This is known as a rest of cervical dilatation. The causes for a prolonged labor, either abnormalities in the power, which is the uterine contraction, and we have three important types, which is either hypotonic dysfunction, and I mean by hypotonic dysfunction. We normally have three rhythmic uterine contractions per 10 minutes, and each contraction lasted for 45 to 60 seconds. In hypotonic dysfunction, it means that the patient have less than three uterine contractions per 10 minutes. I say, for example, one or two uterine contractions per 10 minutes, and each contraction lasted for less than 45 seconds. This is what is meant by hypotonic dysfunction. While for hypertonic dysfunction, it means that the patient may have more than four three uterine contraction per 10 minutes but this uterine contraction it is non-synchronized and it is arrhythmic irregular usually the uterine contraction or for every pregnant lady who have labor it have a period of contractions followed by period of relaxation the period of relaxation is very important in order to re replenish the patient or to uh, supplement the fetus with the blood and oxygen and nutrition so that if the patient have hypertonic dysfunction it means that the patient have continuous uterine contraction with no period of relaxation and this is very dangerous to the fetus because there is no period of relaxation and thus it may jeopardize the fetus and prevent the supplementation of the fetus with the blood and may prevent supplementation of the fetus with the nutrition and oxygen. The third type of power abnormalities is the poor maternal expulsive efforts and this is usually occur or may cause prolongation in the second stage of labor because if the patient have no effort to peer down or to expel the fetus to the exterior wall, then it will cause a prolongation of the second stage of labor. And this is usually due to either the use of epidural analgesia or anesthesia and also occur in the patient who have chronic debilitating illness in which they have uh, or they, ha uh, they have no desire to peer down and may cause a prolongation in the second stage of labor. The other cause for prolongation of, of labor is passenger abnormalities and I mean by the passenger is the abnormalities involving the fetus and these include abnormalities in the size of the fetus especially in the big size fetus like macrosomia. And the macrosomia means when the estimated fetal weight is more than 4.5 kilogram. And this is occur in diabetic fetus, a fet a fetus for diabetic mother, in the fetuses of prolonged pregnancies, uh, and others. Also, if there is abnormality in the presentation of the fetus, and any presentation apart from Vertex presentation may cause a prolongation of labor, like face presentation, trap presentation, breech presentation, and other presentations. Also, malposition of the fetus, like occiput posterior or even occiput transverse, may cause uh, a prolongation of labor. Abnormality in the attitude, and as we know, the attitude means the relationship of different parts of the fetal bodies to each other and we know that 
any attitude apart from flexion attitude also may cause uh, uh, prolongation of labor as in deflection or extension attitude. Also, congenital malformation of the fetus as in cases of hydrocephaly and encephaly, uh, um, um, uh, cystic hygroma and other abnormalities of the fetus also may cause abnormalities and may cause prolongation of labor. Other abnormalities it is the pelvic abnormalities and this is include either pelvic bony pelvis abnormalities like cephalopelvic disproportion and the cephalopelvic disproportion it is either absolute cephalopelvic disproportion or it is relative cephalopelvic disproportion and this is due to fetal causes as it's been mentioned before or maternal causes and the maternal causes either due to uh, bony pelvis abnormalities like in um, uh, as in android platybiloid or anthroboid pelvis which may cause contracted pelvis and may cause cephalopelvic disproportion or soft uh, tissue abnormalities in the maternal pelvis like uterine fibroid uh, cervical stenosis, vaginal stenosis, or congenital malformation of the uterus, and any of these may cause cephalopelvic disproportion and load, lead to prolongation of labor or combination of both. Uh, yeah, that means abnormalities in the, uh, in the maternal uh, origin or abnormalities from the fetal uh, origin, by which may lead to cephalopelvic disproportion and cause prolongation of labor. In the second stage uh, of abnormalities, usually the second stage of labor begins when the cervix is fully dilated and end with the delivery of the fetus. The length of the second stage of labor, it is about two hours ex uh, in the nulliparous patient extend to three hours in the presence of or in the use of epidural analgesia, while for nulliparous it is lasted for one hour and may extend to two hours in the presence of epidural analgesia. The causes for uh, prolongation in the second stage of labor is similar to that of the first stage of labor. It is either uh, abnormalities in the power, in the passages, and in the passenger. The diagnosis for the prolongation of labor, the first important or the key point in the diagnosis of uh, prolonged labor is the importance for the true diagnosis of the onset of labor. As we say that if the patient have false labor and falsely diagnosed that she have an established labor and been admitted to the labor with, uh, as an, uh, uh, she may be falsely diagnosed as uh, prolonged labor. The second point in the diagnosis of uh, prolonged labor who assessment of the maternal and fetal condition. Any evidence of maternal or fetal distress then it is an indication for cesarean section. And the maternal and fetal uh, well-being can be assessed as we mentioned either by a thorough history uh, taking uh, maternal examination, uh, vital sign assessment, and the same for the fetal condition, the fetal movement, fetal heart assessment, cardiotocography, and others. And we have to properly to assess the contractions either by abdominal examination or by the cardiotocography or even sometime in an advanced country by assessment of the uterine contraction in case of uh, rupture of the membrane by the use of intrauterine catheter. All these uh, can be plotted or charted on the partogram for proper assessment of a progress of labor. The treatment of a prolonged labor, if everything is well, with, with no evidence of cephalopelvic disproportion, and the feet with the presence of maternal and fetal condition is stable, then we can allow the labor to continue and with 
uh, rehydration, proper rehydration of the mother with augmentation of labor by the use of oxytocin, uh, oxytocin infusion and proper assessment of the progression of labor. Or we can use the operative delivery, which is the caesarean section, and this is indicated whenever there is an absolute uh, evidence of cephalopelvic disproportion or when there is uh, evidence of fetal or maternal distress. In rare cases, when there is evidence of a prolongation in the second stage of labor with no evidence of cephalopelvic disproportion, uh, and with the presence of roomy, bel roomy pelvis, then we, there is an indication for an instrumental delivery, whether the use of bantus or uh, forceps delivery, uh, provided there is no contraindication for the use of instrumental delivery. Sometimes, if the patient being neg neglected and the patient have evidence of a prolonged labor, and there, uh, the, this, uh, it is not being diagnosed properly and being neglected, then the patient may uh, change or progress to what is called as an abstracted labor. The abstracted labor can be diagnosed by, uh, first of all, by an inspection and on abdominal examination we can see that the uterus is contracted and it is very tender on palpation. This is the abdomen, the normal abdomen, with the evidence of uh, what is called as bundles ring in which the upper uh, segment of the uterus is well contracted and retracted while the lower segment is distended with the evidence of the standard bladder. At the same time, the fetal part is difficult to be palpated and the fetal heart sound is difficult to be felt and sometimes it is negative. And with the evidence of what is called as bundles ring. On pelvic examination, on pelvic examination, we can feel that the vulva is odimatous with dry, hot vagina. The cervix is poorly applied to the presenting part or to the presenting part. And usually there is evidence of excessive molding of the presenting part. Sometimes we can feel the presence of meconium stained lacquer with caput sexidenium of the presenting part. And sometimes if the uterus is ruptured, then the fetal part will be palpable in the peritoneal cavity and the uterus is felt as separate firm mass. This is the finding on pelvic examination for a patient with obstructed labor. The complications of obstructed labor for the fetus, there is risk of fetal asphyxia, evidence of intracranial hemorrhage, risk of pneumonia due to ascending infection and even fetal demis or fetal death. Regarding the mother, there is risk of postpartum uh, infection or sepsis. There is risk of uterine rupture, postpartum hemorrhage because of prolonged uh, labor and atony of the uterus, with risk of hypovolemic shock because of postpartum hemorrhage, there is maybe, in a case of obstructed labor or prolonged uh, labor, there is risk of urinary or uh, fecal fistula because of necrosis, tissue necrosis, and sometimes there may be annular detachment of the cervix. Whenever we diagnose the patient with obstructed labor, then the only treatment for this patient as a definitive treatment is caesarean section. This is usually done after uh, supportive treatment by rehydration of the patient, catheterization of the cervix, preparation of one uh, of blood, and after that, the definitive treatment is by caesarean section. Thank you very much for your listening. I'm ready to have any question after the end of 
de, e, la 